Hello, welcome to Borderlands with Niramas. I'm Joseph and I'm here today with Rack and we are ready to start playing Santa Maria. Santa Maria is a Euro game uh, recently released, I think it was the end of 2017. It's uh, designed by Christian Östby and Eilif Svensson. And it's uh, published by Aporta Games. And I also want to say thank you to Bredspel.se or uh, Lauta Pellita for providing me with this review copy, so thank you very much. And let's just get into the game, start playing. First thing that happens uh, in to play a game like this, well in any game, we are going to uh, choose sort of special abilities. Because we are playing the advanced mode, so we're playing on the B side of the board. If you switch it over, you have an A side where it's it's sort of basically the same. But there you have a sort of, um, what's it called, town hall already put out here somewhere. Now we get to choose where to put our town hall. We also in the advanced mode get a special ability. Uh, that we have for the game and we get to choose and well the Draco Meeple is not included of course But I just have it here to show that this is Draco's board. He's over there holding the box But of course he's shouting commands here to me uh, That only I can hear uh, on what to do. Okay, and so uh, we are going to choose since I'm the first player I uh, Draco will be the first to choose here And I think he likes this He wants to be able to well, he'll, he'll get this town hall that will let him ship as you will see later on and also he will get a special ability that lets him use uh, wood or uh, grain to co uh, sort of try to, um, convert dice. Uh, because this is a dice uh, drafting game. We're going to have dice that we draft, we're going to have our own dice, the blue dice. And it's, uh, well, we roll them, we roll them here in the beginning, so Draco gets a 5. Uh, let's see, where, do, where does he put his... Hmm. Because you do get to roll it before you choose. So let's say he'll put it, um, oh we should also roll the white dice, these are the uh, sort of uh, public pool that we will both be pulling from. So there's like some twos, a one, a three, a four and a five up here. So Draco has this information when he puts out his town hall and I think, I think he wants to put it perhaps like this right there. Okay, you'll see why later on here. Uh, my turn, and of course I get to, I get the other one, I don't get to choose really. So I'll get some extra prayer action there. I'll roll my blue die, that's a three. And then I might want to put it, hmm, something like this. And I have a special ability that when I do shipping, I can put them anywhere. Uh, so if I can man manipulate where they end up, and it all will make more sense in a while. We have some monks, we have six monks each. We start with two wood. I start with three um, silver. Draco has four because he's the second player. And yeah, that's about it. Let's start playing. So, it's my turn. We're in the first year of three. It's only three years and I thought at first when I started playing this game, I started learning, I thought, oh, that sounds like a little, it's three years. But you do a lot of stuff <laughs> and it's a lot of brain burning going on. So I'm happy that it's not longer actually. Okay, so on my turn, there's a few things I can do. I can focus on getting the religion track up here, which will let me recruit monks, which will in the, then let me go and sort of trade or spread religion to the natives. The theme of this game is quite, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not that big of a fan of, of this whole spreading religion to get the natives uh, diamonds and all that, but let's ignore that. It's a Euro, yeah. So, uh, I can do a religion, I can do the conquistador, which is even worse, I guess, thematically. Let's, let's skip that. <laughs> I increase my, my sort of military of my, my um, strength in violence, basically. And I can earn gold doing that, for some reason. Um, yeah, and then we can pass. Um, so on my turn, I can grab a die, I can run it. Let's say I would take a one, then I would instantly, because there's white up here, right? I would do a column, so I will... Take, if I take this one, then I will run it like this, and I will do everything that it meets on the way. And there's different symbols here for different actions. If I do uh, use my blue die, then I will run it this way, like in a row. And as you can see, of course, in some instances, I have to consider, do I want to do the, let's say I take a three here, do I want to do this one first, because it will stop there at the last space. And then when I do my blue one, this will skip this space and just do that one. That's the whole sort of crux of the game, but you will see more of it. Um, 
I think with my first action, what I can do on my turn, I can buy a new tile to sort of improve my board. I think it's called like building your settlement. So I can buy one of these. So these cost two wood. Those bigger ones cost two wood and a grain. That's one action I can do. I can take a uh, die, as I said. I can run my blue die, or I can pass. And if I pass, I sort of I'm out of the round of the year. And whoever, uh, when you pass, you get to place your marker on something. You get to do something. You get bonus. Whoever is highest here, with sort of the weakest bonus, will also be the first player in the next coming year. So. First of all, I think I will spend two wood. Mm, actually, if I wanted to, I could spend three coins as well, because like it's indicated on the board here, I can, I can at any time, it's a free action, I can buy green or wood for three coins each, but I can only have three of each. Good, there's sugar, there's gold, and there's uh, diamonds. These I can't buy, but I can sell wood or Grain for one, bottom for three, some for one, sounds like a bad deal, but anyway, sometimes you need it. Or I could sell any of these for two. Now the gold is also a wild card, so it's really good, but it's kind of hard to get gold. Uh, and down here we have the points. The points in this game is kind of cute. <laughs> it's like a little happy guy, a happy conquistador, yeah. Um, <laughs> and you have the silver, and you can also, oh, another thing you can do on your turn, you can use silver to activate one single space. So. I can put out a silver right here, get a diamond. But then that space is blocked. So if I would run a six here, the space is already taken, we're already used. If I want to continue doing this, the next time it's my turn, I could put out two. And in this case, get to move on the Conquistador and get some green. And then the third time it will cost me three and so on. But the, the money I put out here, I will lose at the end of the round. So I don't want to do that too much. But my first action, ugh, I'm talking so much. There's so much to take in in this game, but I hope you follow along. I'll pay two wood to get one of these tiles. So I could get some coin income, some sugar, some wood, some grain, and that's a uh, sort of a trading post where I can transform wood or diamonds into three coins. I can sell it basically. Uh, I'll, I'll get this one, which lets me get two coins. And as soon as I buy it, I have to place it somewhere. And I have to consider a few things here. So first of all, I want to consider like if I put it here, then I will run my three, I will get to do this action on the way, right? But then that would also benefit the fourth row uh, column. So, but there's only one four out here. We will grab three dice each. You can only have grab three each player, regardless of how many players you are. It could be up to four players in this game. Um, okay, so I actually like it as a two player game though, because yeah, there's not much interaction really. Uh, so it's basically just takes more time if you more people. Um, okay, so I think, well, another thing I have to consider when I place this is what end goals there are out there. And they, these are where you sort of pick randomly in the beginning. So uh, these three uh, brownish tiles, when I get a monk from the religion track, I can place it uh, on one of these. It will cost me two points at the end game, so I will lose two points. So I might, must make sure that whatever I place it at will make me more points than two. But that's usually the case. So this one, I want to have my colonists, little guys on the, on the tiles, connected to my town hall. And I'll get one point each, maximum of 12. Well, basically 10 then, because it cost me two to go there, right? This one, I want to have... A lot of ships in a row. Now I haven't demonstrated shipping or shipping action yet, but we'll get to that. That's basically getting a lot of shipping done of the same kind. And this one is most also very important for my consideration here on where to place tiles because this is building a three by three or four by four or a five by five, getting more and more points. Uh, so let's say I want to go for that. Now, if I don't activate one of the goals, I don't score it. So it's it's an option for me to to go for those, but I need to go for some goals. Uh, so if I want to be, build like a five by five, now this is six by six, right? So I have to consider what what will I include in that. So I think I'll do this. I think I'll do this. I'll put it right there. And now uh, when it's my turn again, I can run my three if I want to. I'll get to do three different actions here because I'll pass three, or I'll get, not actions, but I'll get three things basically. So it's Draco's turn, and he has the same choice, of course, to make. Now. Um, 
I think Drac will do something different. He will do a shipping, so we will get to see how that works. So he will run his... Hmm. Yeah, he'll run his five. So it goes over here, and it lands on a shipping space, which is his town hall as well. He chose that one. And when he does a shipping, we have four different... These are uh, always the same in the start, because they have a special background. Uh, but then you replenish with these random ones. So he can send away, ship something to the old country, basically. To Spain or wherever we come from. Um, so he can ship something and he'll get points for it. And also he'll get an income, as I will show you. So he's going to ship one piece of wood. Uh, but of course, one piece of wood is not that attractive. So it's only one point. And now, since it came from this slot, which is the prayer track, which is how you move on the religion, he will flip it over and he will put it in his shipping space here or his docks basically in the prayer slot and now he will have an income so at the end of every year or, or round uh he will get an income and in this case he will get to do one move on the prayer track for free so he's sort of building up for this also this is something where you want to have like if you have one of each year so you have a set then you get three points at the end of the game also if you have a lot of them in a row well you can activate the goal over there to get uh two points each for in one row so you can get a lot of points by shipping as well and as soon as he did that we will refill here so a new one comes up and this is a bit more expensive it's gold and grain but that's four points and it ends up in the same space so no matter what you take here what you ship if it's come from this space then it goes to the religion space except for my special power i could pay coins to move it to one of the other slot slots on my um docks to get another income okay so that was Draco's first part of his move, but then the die will continue here, so it will end up here. It will always sort of stop at the end of the row or column it's going in. And here he will get one piece of wood and one conquistador move. So he'll get his wood back right away, which is nice because he's probably planning to build some more stuff later on. And he will get to move on the conquistador track like that. In the two-player game, at the end of this year, whoever is uh, furthest ahead here will get four points. In a four player game you will have like first one gets six then you get four then you get two and the last guy doesn't get anything so this could be important to get points but at the end of each year this will reset to the start not the religious track but the conquistador track will reset and then you will have a new competition next time around but also you want to pass over these because then you get gold so draco has started going on that he's starting to conquer yeah uh, and it's my turn so, oh, so much to consider in this game. It seems fairly easy. It's not that big, not that complicated, not that many components. Really lovely, by the way. Uh, sugar and grain and all that stuff. Gold over here. So, I think on my turn, I think I would grab a four. So I'll grab this four. And that's uh, one of the white dice I can grab. I will Total, I will get uh, three of them. But I kind of want to grab this before Draco gets it sort of. It's a race to get the, the number you want. Now, if I want to, I could pay a coin to make it into a five or a three, or even more. I could make it into a six by paying two coins. So uh, I can manipulate the dice, which is something I really like. Um, but I'll use it as a four. So it goes up here, and now it will go in the column because it's a white dice. So it'll go to this spot where I get two coins. So there we go. And then it will end up here where I get one wood and a conquistador, just like Draco got earlier. So there we go. And I'll move on the conquistador track. And now I arrived at this spot uh, later than Draco, so he's ahead of me. If this were the end position of the year, then he would get the four points. Okay, and now it's Draco's turn. And now I think Draco wants to expand his board a bit. I think he wants to get one of these tiles. Hmm. I think he will pay three coins to grab one, where is it? One grain. And he'll pay two wood and a grain to grab one of these uh, corners, basically where you get more slots. And I think Draco, he wants to improve a bit on the, on the religion track. So he'll get this one where he gets to pray and there's also two colonists there. And remember, one of the goals up there is to connect these colonists to your uh, town hall. For endgame points so uh, and all of these places have little roads it's kind of hard to see on some of them but 
So let's say he would put it like this, then it would be connected to his town hall through the this farm space. Maybe that's a good one actually. I think he will go with that. Yeah, he'll he'll just put it like that. Okay, and so it's my turn. And so you see, you build up your board, and then you get to roll. You do the dice crafting, but you get more and more out of it as we keep going. Now I kind of want to. Hmm. I do want to do some shipping as well, and I want to, when I do, I want to be able to ship something here. Um, hmm, okay, yeah, I think I'll know what I'll do. There's a lot of thinking in this game. I mean, I, I'm not playing the best st strategy here or anything, because that would like take forever uh, to think this through for two players at the same time, because Draco is just mostly over there. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, okay. So here we go, here's one prayer action. Now we get to see this. I'll do a prayer action, which means I'll move on the prayer track. If I want to, I could also spend a green to move another step. That's like every time you active, you'd move there, you could pay a green to move another step. Now the reason I want to move here is both to get these monks, right? When I pass these monk symbols, but it's also once I pass this, this space, I'll get a second blue die. I get to roll a use immediately. So, and I can have a maximum of three once I pass this space. So that means that I can have more actions basically, I could have three blue dice later on. So it keeps going, so it goes here, and now I get two coins again, because it passed the same spot again like my four did on that level. And now I'll get here where I get one grain, and one conquistador move. And as you can see, you have to do this in the right order, because otherwise you don't have like, for example, now I don't, I didn't have the grain when I did the prayer, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a big puzzle basically. So that was my action, and now it's Draco's turn. And Draco, I think he will go for, he will take a two. And he will, oh, sorry for that. I need to get some uh, oil going, I guess, in my, in my tripod. So he'll, um, and Draco, remember, he can use a grain or a wood to buy to any number. So I guess he would should get some resources, but he'll, he'll do this. So the two goes like this, he'll get the prayer action. I'll just do it up here. He moves on the prayer track, he'll get here, he'll get a green and some sugar as well. And then he ends up on the shipping. So now he used this space twice, this way and this way. So he gets a shipping action and now he's going to go for the green, I think. Mm, or should he? No, 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 he'll, he'll go for the sugar. He'll pay a sugar to ship here and now the income will be... Well, I get two points, but the income will be uh, two coins at the end of the year, or each year. So he's building up there, getting some income, and the new tile comes up. And it's sugar and wood. Okay, so it's my turn. Hmm. And I kind of want to... Hmm, I have a lot of money. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Okay, so I'll use one coin. This is the uh, other actor you haven't seen yet. And I'll put this, because there's no six out here. I could transform the five into a six, but hmm. no, I'll, pay, I'll put a coin down here, which means I'll get a prayer action. So I'll move on the prayer track and I'll pay my grain. So let me move another time. That means I'll get another blue die and I'll get to roll it right away. So three, and also I get to put out one monk. So now that I get to put out the monk, I have to consider, I mean, these spaces, uh, here I get two sugar, here I get two diamonds, a gold of three points. Also, let's say I go here and get two sugar. If Draco or any other player, or more players wanna go there as well, he'll have to pay me two coins. And let's say we were three players, me and Draco, we both go into this space. Now a third player comes in and he wants to go there. He has to pay two to Draco and two to me. So you want, it's a race. You want to be fast grabbing these spots as well. Also something I haven't mentioned yet is that up here we have special powers. So besides our sort of own special powers, uh, those that we got in the beginning, we can also grab sort of public special powers. So if I would put my uh, monk up here, I would get three points at the end of the game, but I also get the ability to run my blue dice uh, in columns. That's really nice. If I go here, uh, I get to the money I put out to do single actions. I get to take one stack, which obviously is the biggest stack, back at the end of the year. And if I go here, I can pay two coins to buy 
uh, uh, grain or wood instead of the three coins that it costs normally, right? As the free action. So I think I have I have pre I got I got some money. Yeah. I think I think I'll go here. So from now on I can buy green and wood for two coins instead of three coins as it is, as it is normally. That's kind of nice. I got a special power. And if Draco wants to grab it, he has to pay me two coins when he goes there with his monk. So yeah, that's a good thing as well. So that was my action. Uh, I did the single action here of praying. I paid another green and I got to move over there on the religion track. So it's Draco's turn. He only has one coin now. I don't think he will be doing that stuff. I think he will grab... Hmm, I think he'll grab a two. Because it has a green, so you want to do the same thing basically. Because, like in the first year, you want to grab your second blue die as fast as possible, of course. It's like in a worker placement game, you want to have more workers. So he'll grab the two, he'll run it like this, he'll get to do the prayer, which means that he will move on here and he will pay a grain to move again. And once again, here it's not a race here, so it doesn't matter who's. Where? Well, he'll get a monk from that and he'll get another blue die. So let's roll Draco's second blue die. Let's say three as well. I keep rolling threes. And one of Draco's monks. Where does he want to go though? Huh. I mean, in the beginning of the game, you kind of don't want to put your stuff up here on the gold because that's sort of. There's no rush. On the other hand, if you go there first, then you will get coins from the, from the other players, but. You know what, I think Draco, he likes, yeah. But that's not for now, and that's not, okay. So I think Draco will just go for getting some resources, basically. So I think he'll go over here, where he gets two sugar right away, which is nice. So he has some sugar, might maybe want a ship over here and so on. So that's good. And my turn. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get another tile. So remember, I only have one. I only have one wood, but I can pay two now because of the power there for wood and grain. So I'll pay four, which uh, gets me both a wood and a grain and my wood, and I can buy one of these big tiles. And I think, I think I want another way to be shipping because I only have one. Draco has one on his town hall, but I only have the sort of one in the corner that everyone has. So I'll get this one: wood and shipping. Um, yeah, this is like everyone has one up here in the left corner shipping, but I want to have one more for later. Hmm. So do I want, I think, well, I don't want to ship twice in a row. And I also have to consider, I'm sort of going for this sort of building a five by five, right? So I have to consider, hmm, yeah, maybe like that. Because also when you uh, completely com when you complete a row or a column, uh, every colonist guy you have here will be worth one point at the end of the game, regardless of the goals. Uh, now also we have a goal to get the colonist guys connected to our town hall, so we should get us more points if we activate it, of course. I think I'm happy with that. I'll put it like that for now, at least. I'm trying to planning my five by five from here to there to there, sort of. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. And so it's Draco's turn, and what is he doing? What is Draco doing? He kind of wants to do the same, of course, but he doesn't have the resources to do that. And... Hmm... Hmm, hmm, hmm... Okay, I think I know what Draco will be doing. He will spend his only coin to do a single action here to get a wood and a prayer. He gets a wood, and uh, he'll get a prayer up here. Nothing more happens there. And that was his turn. Now it's my turn. I'll... I'm gonna run... Yeah, I'm gonna pay a coin to make this three into a four. Because one for each step I go, right? And then I'll run it like this. I'll get a green and a, some sugar. There. And then nothing happens on these spaces. And there I get to ship. And then I will ship this one, which is one grain. And it goes to my Conquistador space. Or if I want to now, I could pay a coin, cost my special power to move it up or down. Or two coins to move it even down here, where you get uh, victory points at the end of every round. 
But I'm kind of happy with having it there. I want to compete on the Conquistador track, so I'm happy with that. Now it's Draco's turn. Uh, let's see, he does want to ship, right? Yeah. Okay, so he'll he'll grab one. It's his third eye, so he got all of those white, uh, his three white dice now. And he'll ship. Uh, oh, by the way, sorry, there should be a new tile coming up here. Oh, it's another, just one green. But he'll, he'll spend one wood and one uh, sugar that he picked up earlier from the natives. And then he'll get this one, that's three points. New one comes up. Oh, that's gold and diamond, but it's five points. And this one flips and it goes to his money income over here. So he's sort of starting to build sort of an engine here where he will generate money at the end of each year. Okay, and what am I doing? Now these dice are just safe for me. Draco can't grab them because he already took his three white dice. So I'm, I'm, I don't need to rush that. This five is terrible for me because in my five uh, column, I already did the th stuff here. So I can have to, I have to pay to, to make it into something else, I guess. Well, I could make it into six, but then I'm, I shouldn't have done this because then the prayers are covered. It's so much to think about in this game. Oh, so do I want to grab? Oh yeah, I could do that. Okay, so let's do the three and get wood and a prayer and another prayer. So living on a prayer or, you know, uh, here we go. Two steps. That means I get to put out another monk. And now what do I want? Wow, this is so hard. But I, I really want the... I really want this power so I can run my blue dice in columns. Now I already run them now, but in the next year and this third year, it's going to be really nice to have that power. Okay, so I've done that. And now it's Draco's turn and he still has his still has his three here, which is kind of bad for him. Oh, but nothing is really good for him right now because I mean, if you transform it into four, it's yeah. Hmm. You know, Drac he's going to run the three anyway. So he's going to skip over there and he'll get one grain and one conquistador. One grain and he'll move on the conquistador track. Like that. And it's my turn. Hmm. And you know what, I think, I want to make the most out of this five that is still here. So what I'll do is, I'll, as a free action, at any time you can sell or buy the, uh, sort of, so I'll sell these sugar for two coins. And remember, because of my special power up there that I activated, I can spend two coins instead of three to buy another wood. So that was free actions, and now I'll do my main action, which is spend two wood to grab another of these tiles so I can make the most out of that last white die. Um, I think sugar is good. Sugar is good to pick up so I'll put up some uh, sugar and a colonist. I'll put it like this. Yeah. Now it's Draco's turn. Now Draco already used pretty much everything he has. He could sell of course but you know what he's not going to sell and so on. He is going to pass. And also it's important for Draco that when he passes now that he's the first guy because then he can grab the Conquistador so I don't grab it. It's important because then he gets to go over here and he'll get a gold. Uh, there was a risk otherwise that he would have been stopped there and then you don't get anything. You just get uh, pushed back and so he'll get a gold that's a wild card. It's nice for him to have. And now when he passes, he also gets his income which is four coins in total two for each of his ships there. And he'll get to do a prayer action. And then he will move over another monk. So we'll get to put up this monk. I think Draco wants to be the first to... He's going to be the first to start a goal, sort of. So he'll go for this shipping goal of having uh, max 12. So you can have two points each. So you can have six ships in a, in, in a row. So he's going to go for a lot of money ships. Just generate a lot of money and get those points from those ships. Right now he's at four points minus the two to activate it. So he's at two points uh, profit now, but he's a happy little dragon. Yeah, okay. So it's my turn and now he passed. So I can just keep going now. 
But I'm not gonna do that much, I think. Because like, I, I also wanna get over here so I get a gold. But the thing is, I have uh, income of one conquistador down there. So I'll get that. I don't need to worry about that. And when I pass, I can grab something else. Okay, so what I'll do is, I'll take this five, pay one coin to make it into a six. And now I set this up because I bought that tile. So now I'll get diamond and sugar and wood and nothing else because it's blocked down here. I already did the prayer action. That was kind of stupid maybe. I don't know. Maybe I should have done this prayer action but I got the wood as well. That would be smarter. And I ordered around. Oh yeah. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> and now I will pass. When I pass, I'll take the shipping action down here. You can also grab this. That's like one space with the colonies. Like if you need to fill something in to make those perfect uh, boxes, squares. And I'll do the shipping here, which means I get to ship something right away. And I will ship a diamond. I'll ship a diamond. And now this goes over here. In, and I will actually start scoring points from it. Like that, a new one comes up. Two wheat comes up here on the points place, on the docks. And so since I passed, I get my income, so I'll get a conquistador and one point. So I'll move here, which will let me get one gold. But remember, Draco got there first, so he's ahead on the conquistador track. And I'll get one point, which is just like this, and then I'll just have it like this, so the other players uh, don't know what, how many points I have down here in my, my happy box. Like all the conquistadors had, of course, a house where they kept their, their victory points. Okay, so that was the first year. And uh, now we'll take a look at, okay, so Draco is ahead of me because he got there first. He'll get four points. So, find a three and a one. Give it to Draco in his little victory point house. And that was it. This resets. We go to year two. We are not passing. Now, Draco will be the first player because he was closest to the top here. So, he'll be the first player. Like that. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We just keep playing. And... Uh, Hmm, yeah, okay, so the dice, of course, gets removed. The money that we put out, like I activated down here, this is just lost. Since I didn't have that ability, if I had that, I would get to keep one of the stacks, which I only have one stack now, so Draco loses that. He'll roll his blue dice again. Two and a six. And we roll the white dice. So some twos. A three, a four, a five, and a six. And I'm gonna roll my blue dice here as well. And okay, so yeah, let's re-roll that. So one and a three. And remember, I can, because of the special power I have activated, I can actually run this blue die like this, like in a column. That could be interesting. I don't know. This is kind of nice as well. I'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's it. And we are ready to get going in the second year. But well, that's this is basically the game. We do this three times. Now, of course, we, the boards will be more and more filled. These tiles will replenish, by the way. We just put out five new and remove the old ones. I mean, as we go here, I will perhaps build something like this and try to get that, you know, the, the five by five. What is this? Five by four? Yeah. I'll keep building. Maybe I need to put in one of these, just cover up some hole there. Um, and as I do this, more when I do run the dice, I will get more and more stuff. So you... You sort of get this escalation like an engine building which is really something I like <laughs> I really like that where you feel like the more you do the more you get and you just keep going it's just like a snowball rolling so that is Santa Maria really um, really fun game really like it and I hope that you enjoyed this run through and I will hope that we will see you in the next video I'm trying to keep a schedule now and have the videos going uh, every week and so on so you don't have to wait too long for the next one so have a great evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Take care. Bye-bye. Do you want to keep this little dragon this happy all day long? Then like the video. Board Games with Niramas is sponsored by Alara Games in Sweden.